Now, there's another disturbing story that we are monitoring for you. It has to do with the back-to-back -back warnings of foreigners who are coming into the country. So it started with the, uh, the abduction of the two Canadian girls, and then the Canadian embassy issued a warning to its citizens. Then the UK government issued a similar warning. The latest to join the countries that are warning their citizens is Australia. The Australian government has issued a warning to its citizens to be wary of what it describes as the deplorable security situation in the northern parts of the country, cautioning its citizens. First Assistant Foreign Affairs and Trade Secretary H.K. Liu um, and the High Commissioner to Ghana, Andrew Barnes, announced a 75,000 Australian dollar support to train and enable Ghana security services offer security and safety uh, to Australian mining companies in the country and the sub-region. Australian mining companies have enormous interest and already a huge amount of investment in West Africa. And we don't want that to be under any threat, especially by terrorism or security issues. So the conference has been organized to make sure that we have all, we actually share all the intelligence and information that we have on hand uh, about how we can keep ourselves safer and how we can actually assist host countries to also deal with these um, issues that are emerging. Uh, so to that extent, I'm extremely pleased to be able to announce today that Australian government will be contributing 75,000 Australian dollars towards a interagency counter-terrorism course to be run by the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Centre. Uh, we believe uh, that one of the key things that needs to be done around issues like this, and certainly Australia has some experience in dealing with this in our region as well, is to ensure that there is clear communication and clear information sharing channels, especially amongst different agencies. All right, so we're staying on this subject matter. Emmanuel Kuting is a security analyst and I would want to pick his thoughts on this back-to-back -back warnings. Should we, we be worried as a country? Mr. Kuting, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. It is becoming one too many, these warnings. Are they justified, if I should ask, and then also as Ghanaians and our government for that matter? Should they be worried? Well, thank you for having me and very good afternoon to your cherished viewers. Yes, whether we should be worried or otherwise, it will depend on the context. One, you realize that uh, many of these embassies are duty bound to give their nationals these updates for the fact that insurers in, the, in their respective country normally want to know what uh, security situations are in these uh, respective countries. And you realize that in Ghana, we don't pay more attention to uh, life and property insurance. So in most of these cases, if the embassies fail to update their citizens about the happenings in their respective jurisdictions, more often than not, they are complicit in insurance claim. But they must do it within the context of the law. You will agree with me that it has taken Ghana many years and if you like decades, to build a niche as the safest country in Africa. So I've heard a lot of debate this morning about citizens not happy and comparing the rate of crime in this country to Ghana. Mm. I think mm. that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is not doing its work. Mm. If these uh, alerts are coming and they go on challenge, mm. it means that these embassies have done it in consultation with the relevant agencies or the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Otherwise, I think it is proper that the, uh, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs do the honorable thing by inviting these uh, embassies to come and provide a fair evidence to mm. the fact that they are given... But, but my final question to you regarding that, Mr. Kuting, would be, do they need empirical evidence to, to, to give these, uh, these alerts? Look what happens sometimes in the northern part of the country. And this particular warning mentioned the northern part of the country. Other ones have mentioned the fact that, you know, insecurity could occur, kidnapping could occur. These are things that are happening. So what empirical evidence do they have to have before they warn their citizens? You see, these embassies don't exist as an island. They have to do this alert or warning in consultation with our relevant security agencies. Because 
you, you can never imagine the negative effects this is bringing to the country. And I just listened to uh, a financial consultant who was talking about the negative effect it's even having on our cities, people who are trying to come to Ghana by way of terrorism or um, tourism or business and other things will be thinking otherwise. So right. there's nothing right. wrong with such uh, uh, warnings, but mm -hmm. it must be done within the context of the oh, law oh, and oh. conjecture okay. to paint the country black as if there is so much crime in Ghana. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kuting, as always, for your time. Emmanuel Kuting is a security analyst helping us there.